In this video, we're going to go over reflexes, feedback loops, and reflex arcs. Reflex arcs are referring to the neural pathway for reflexes. And this is starting from the sensory stimulus and goes all the way to the motor response. In general, reflexes follow the same steps. The first step is a sensory or afferent neuron detects the stimulus and then sends a signal to the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, this information is integrated by an interneuron. The interneuron will then send a signal to a motor neuron. The motor or the efferent neuron will then send a signal to the muscles that will then contract to produce the response. Now, a couple things. First of all, sensory and afferent, motor and efferent, these are terms you want to be able to associate together. So afferent in general means towards. So sensory neurons are afferent neurons because they send signals toward the spinal cord. Motor neurons and efferent neurons. Efferent means away. So motor neurons are efferent neurons because they send signals away from the spinal cord. A good mnemonic to memorize this is same. Sensory neurons are afferent. Motor neurons are efferent. That's helpful to keep in mind. Another important uh, part of these steps is that not all reflexes involve all four steps. In particular, this second step here of interneurons is not included in all reflexes. And a good example is the patellar reflex. The patellar reflex is an example of a monosynaptic reflex. And you can see how it works in this diagram. Essentially, the sensory neuron is going to detect the stretch and the sensory neuron, once it detects a stretch, synapses directly on the motor neuron, which will then elicit the muscle contraction. As you can see, it involves one synapse between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron, which is why it's called a monosynaptic reflex. Most reflexes, however, are polysynaptic, and you can see how they work in this diagram. Essentially, the sensory neuron, in this case, is going to detect a noxious stimuli and when it detects this stimulus, it's going to send a signal to the spinal cord onto an interneuron in the spinal cord. The interneuron will then send a signal to a motor neuron, which will then elicit the motor response. So you can see in this case, there are two synapses, one synapse from the sensory neuron to the interneuron, and another synapse from the interneuron to the motor neuron. So this is a polysynaptic reflex. And both of these that we looked at are fairly simple examples of reflexes. A lot of reflexes are far more complicated and involve multiple interneurons.